Hello, and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 2150, the topic is nutrition, and the title is Balancing Fat Loss and Performance. I'm going to be talking about a client today where he is wanting to lose fat, but he's also prepping for an upcoming powerlifting meet. So when we talk about performance, we're talking about strength today. However, that could be used, you know, performance for athletes, performance for other activities, uh, CrossFit, Highland Games, Strongman, uh, whatever you might be into. So we can use this example to understand the concept, but then you can apply it to your needs. Uh, This client, they currently weigh 265 pounds and preparing for a power of the meet in January. They want to make the 242 pound weight class, but they don't want to make it via a huge water cut. They're using as motivation for fat loss. But (laughs) they also want to make some PRs at the upcoming meet. They don't want to just lose weight and show up to the meet just to show up. They want to show out, as they said. They just competed on their own in September in the 275 pound weight class. So they reached out to me after that and uh, we just started this past week. Now at that meet, they squatted 550 pounds, which is 250 kilograms. They benched 390.5 pounds, which is 177.5 kilogram. And they deadlifted 572 pounds, which is 260 kilograms. On the bench, they did try for a third attempt at over 400, uh, which they said they, like, bummer, they missed. uh, Basically, they stalled out on the lockout. So we were talking, and their goals for the January meet, they want to drop down to the 242-pound class, and they would like to take their squat from 550 to 572. The idea is to make the previous deadlift that they got at this past meet their new squat. Then for bench, they want to secure that 401-pound bench press, which is 182.5 kilograms. That solidifies a 400-pound bench in competition, which is incredibly rare. Um, Then for deadlift, they'd like to get over 600. They know that might be a big goal given that they want to also lose weight, but... What the hell, you know, why not try for it? (laughs) So we just started this past Monday, which gives us about 15 weeks to their competition. So in 15 weeks, which is roughly four months, they want to lose 23 pounds and add 66 pounds to their total. Is this doable? Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. That's what I told him. Heck yes. Uh, So part of what made me say heck yes (laughs) was that I was able to watch them Uh, in their videos. They sent me their videos from the past meet and their technique in the videos like isn't bad but there are some easy to address things technique wise that will really help them better display the current strength they have. So the numbers they presented at the meet they actually are stronger than those numbers if their technique was crisper. So I'm going to help them with the technique stuff and I know that's going to give us a boost on uh, all three lifts. And then to improve his squat and deadlift, uh, basically what's hindering both of those lifts is his glutes. He, he doesn't have any glutes, <laughs> so we need to build some glutes. And his technical faults are related to weak glutes. So if we can strengthen the glutes, uh, that will fix the technique stuff as well, as him just being aware of it and then you know kind of execute, executing on those uh, technique cues. And then for bench, just need some stronger triceps. He has a big chest, but kind of smaller triceps, which is why he kind of like dies on the lockout. We're also improving some lat tightness, some positioning, which is going to give him more explosiveness off the chest. And that's going to help hopefully push him through the lockout as well. Now, for 15 weeks, we can spend about, you know, 10, 11 or those uh, kind of pushing the muscles, pushing the accessories, trying to get whatever strength and growth we can. But then we're going to need the last four to five weeks to pull out the accessories and let his uh, newly acquired strength kind of peak. Let all the connective tissue stress, let the muscle stress, let the inflammation, all that calm down. And uh, that is going to help him then peak uh, strength-wise for the meat. Now, can he build muscle and strength while needing to lose 23 pounds? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's that's what I do. This is why I have a job, thank goodness and thank God. <laughs> uh, but that's what I want to share in today's podcast, what we're going to do to nutritionally balance fat loss and performance. So this is stuff I do all the time, uh, all the time, all the time, uh, is balancing some type of weight manipulation with strength. Uh, a lot of the clients I work with, not all of them, but a lot of them are powerlifters. 
and we're usually fluctuating body weight to kind of move up a weight class, move down a weight class, transfer between off-season weight versus competition weight. It's not uncommon for someone to say walk around it, you know, and train in the off-season at 180, but they compete at 165. So we're always manipulating weight things like that, um, helping push and drive people up weight classes. So maybe they peaked you know, a 148 weight, pound weight class, they want to go up to the 165. How are we going to add muscle tissue, add strength in strategic ways to let them fill out the 165 class? So these are things we do on a regular basis. Now, today's example is for fat loss. Um, you know, I just gave examples of sometimes you have to push somebody's weight up, but today's example is fat loss. So the first thing we did was we set up his program in a way that allows us to do caloric cycling. So what this means is we have one day for squat and deadlift. He's actually going to do his heavy kind of competition variation of squat and deadlift both in one day. Then he's going to have one day for bench press. Then we have one day for squat and deadlift accessories and one day for bench press accessories. Then he has three days of no lifting, but we do have a minimal step count on those days to make sure he's up and active and moving around. Uh, so essentially what this does is it sets us up with three days of no lifting but decent activity, two days of heavy lifts, but they're low volume. They're more like technique focused. And then two days of high volume with a growth focus. What that then allows us to do is to modify his calories to blend the two goals. So what we can do nutritionally is the three days of no lifting, we can drive for a maximal tolerance of calorie deficit. Really drive for fat loss on those days. Then two days of heavy lifting, but it's more so like technique focused. We want to have enough energy to do the workouts well but we can definitely still be in a calorie deficit on those days. And then the two days of high volume lifting where we have a growth focus, we're actually gonna be in a slight calorie surplus in the 12 hours post training to provide enough carb-based energy, uh, energy like carbs and fats and protein to create new muscle tissue. So a way you can break it down, and I'm just gonna throw out numbers as a way for you to kind of um, easier to comprehend this via audible, <laughs> like audio. Uh, so we might have three days reason at 1,000 calorie deficit, really driving fat loss. Those are three non-training days. Then the two heavy training days, maybe he's going to be in like a, a 300 calorie deficit. Then the two volume days, the growth days, we might be actually in a little bit of a surplus that's carb-based because we know that coming into those days, his glycogen storage is going to be completely empty. So we have room for a surplus before it would be converted over to uh, new body fat tissue. Um, like, well, new body fat. It's not tissue. But um, his glycogen stores would fill up. So we have room to be in a little bit of excess before the excess would cause body fat. So what this allows us to do is we have three days to drive fat loss, two days to have some fat loss, and then two days where we're not going to have really any fat loss because we're aiming for muscle growth. Now, as protein is going to be very controlled throughout this uh, whole time, making sure we have enough protein to do repairs and maintenance even on the low-calorie days. So essentially, we're creating a calorie deficit wave that'll equate to about 3,500 calorie deficit per week, which will allow us to you know, roughly estimate that we should lose about a pound on average throughout this process. A pound a week, sorry, on average throughout this process. Now this goal is, this like approach basically, is going to need modified along the way, but this is the concept that we're going to go with. The three non-training days really drive fat loss. The two technical days, a little bit of fat loss, but make sure we have good workouts. The two growth days, actually going to be in a little bit of a calorie surplus, tons of protein, and it's all post-workout, 12 hours post-workout, when his body would need it the most and actually use it the most for growth. That's going to allow him to have a mixture of his goals of fat loss and improving performance. And then in the final weeks, the final, say, four or so weeks, we're not going to be pushing accessories. So we can actually go into a deficit on those days as well. And that will help us drive the extra weight, uh, like weight loss, fat loss that we need during those final roughly four weeks. So this concept of a calorie deficit wave is how you would balance fat loss and performance. 
feeding yourself for what you need on whatever day it is. <laughs> Non-training days, maximal fat loss. You want to have sufficient protein for recovery and maintenance, but maximal fat loss. Then training days, the more technical based days, definitely still going to be in a calorie deficit, but a smaller deficit so that we have good enough energy to get through the workouts and still plenty of protein for repair and maintenance. Then on the days we want to grow on, he's going to be a slight surplus via carbs and plenty of protein for repair, but also the positive adaptations we want to make. And that's going to be specifically timed for the 12 hours post-training. That's when his body would be most responsive to using the excess carbs and proteins to create new muscle tissue. So when I was doing my master's uh, in school for uh, nutrition, I, this was what I did my master's thesis on was the uh, post-training anabolic window. <laughs> uh, it's kind of more of a bodybuilding uh, thing is thinking like, you know, oh, how soon after workouts do you have to eat? That's the anabolic window. Is it is it 20 minutes? Is it one hour? Is it two hours? So I did a ridiculous amount <laughs> of research and uh, wrote a really long fancy pants paper on it. And um, you can absolutely... Uh, in a sense, like maximize muscle positive, like muscle growth adaptation within that like 12 hour window. If you go past that, can you still influence muscle growth? Absolutely. But at that point, we're probably going to be getting enough muscle growth that we're going to achieve our goals. And we want to start dropping into the deficit since that's uh, fat loss is one of our goals as well. If somebody didn't have fat loss, maybe they were just more so like fat maintenance. <laughs> uh, you could extend that window to 24 hours. Easy. So it kind of depends on blending the goals of you have of, okay, how much muscle growth do I want? How much positive uh, muscle and strength adaptation versus fat loss? Which am I wanting to err on the side of more to make sure I secure whichever goal the most? So that's essentially what we're doing with him is playing that game where we're going to just start and go with the 12 hour window, see how he feels, see how the workouts are improving, and then modify things as we would need. But the concept of a caloric deficit cycle, like a wave, is what's going to allow you to achieve your goals. So you'll have days where you lose a lot of fat, days you lose some fat, and days you don't lose any, maybe at all. But on those days, you're going to be making that muscle growth, that strength adaptation that you're really looking for to blend the two goals. So you still have enough overall calories coming in to fuel performance and make your positive training adaptations. So I thought this would be fun to share, that you can actually do this. You can make cycles and waves and use one day for this goal and one day for that goal. Sometimes people get caught up thinking, you know, oh, you can't, you can't gain muscle and, you know, lose fat at the same time. At the same singular second of the day, yes, <laughs> you can't do both things at the same second of the day. But from day to day, or a couple days here, a couple days there, can you actually do both? Yes, you can blend these goals, and we do it all the time. So if you want to learn how to set this up, you can listen to podcast 2136. It was a nutrition podcast titled Setting Up a Calorie Deficit Diet for Fat Loss. You can listen to that and then, then pick and choose how much of a deficit you want to be in. I actually have a podcast that helps talk about like that deficit concept as well. Uh, and that is podcast 2145, so just a couple ago. It's titled, What is the Proper Calorie Caloric Deficit for Fat Loss? And that kind of explains a little bit about um, you can push to different depths on different days depending on different needs, that kind of thing. But podcast 2136 will teach you how to set up a calorie deficit diet. And then you can kind of play with that, modify that on your own. If you want to go through that on your own, great. If you have any questions along the way, let me know. You can email me at brewlarynjim at gmail.com. If you want me to do it for you, you can hire me for a month. <laughs> uh, this is what I do, and I don't have any contracts. So we would talk to each other. We would work out the details, flush it out, let you try it for four weeks. And then you can keep going with the service if you like, or you can just kind of take it from there and run with it on your own. But if you're interested, we have free ways for you to do it, which is the podcast 2136. And then we also have uh, economically affordable, as best as I can, <laughs> ways for you to do it as well, uh, which is hiring me for a month. You can go to our website, www.brutalirongym.com, go to the one-on-one -on -one services page to learn more about the one-on-one -on -one services and different ways in which I can help you out if you are interested in those services. 
Awesome. I hope this was helpful. Hopefully it gave you uh, just some insight into the fact that you can do this stuff. So if you want to do it, you can do it. It's up to you. Just got to decide and put in the work and boom, you can have it. If you have any questions, if you need anything, let me know. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. The more people that know about the podcast, the more people could be helped by the podcast. If you share it on social media, that reaches the most amount of people. But even if you just share it in a conversation with somebody, just let someone know that this podcast exists and that will help them totally for free. If you like the podcast, you can consider donating to support the podcast, which you can do on our website. You can sign up for just a one-time donation if you think this is really helpful and you want to keep the podcast going, or you can sign up for monthly donations, and that's super helpful. Even something like five bucks, hey, it adds up and it helps pay the bills. (laughs) So it'll help pay the hosting costs and all the other craziness that goes in with this. So I appreciate everybody who does that. Uh, Thank you very, very much. And then also, if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. I post new and different stuff every single day on Instagram and YouTube. You can find us under the name Brutal Iron Gym. And if you find us, please follow us so we can grow those platforms as well. As always, I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.